artillery needed to move quickly to keep up with advancing armies. Self-propelled artillery emerged. As fast as a tank, but lightly armored, these were not front-line weapons. These artillery pieces could drive themselves to a firing position, set up, and deliver accurate artillery fire to forward forces in support of troops. There are many examples of these from both the German and American armies. The German Panzer II tank was undergunned and under-armored and was withdrawn from frontline service early in 1940. Its chassis was reworked and a howitzer 105 mm was added to become a self-propelled artillery piece, the SDKFZ-124 Vespe. The Sturm Tiger, built on the Panzer VI Tiger chassis, was armed with a large naval mortar and was enlisted to demolish heavily defended buildings and fortified areas. Only 18 were ever built. The Americans followed suit with models like the M7 Priest 105mm howitzer employed by the British during the war. There was also the M8 HMC 75mm mobile artillery based on the Stuart light tank. The Marines also found use for self-propelled artillery. The 75mm howitzer version of their LVT A4, which fought with the 5th Marine Division, 2nd Armored Amphibious Battalion at Iwo Jima in 1945. Other technology was also creeping into the field of artillery, the rocket. The T-34 Calliope rocket launcher, based on a tank chassis, was called the Screaming Mimi, after the noise made by the rocket's firing. The HMC M37 was another self-propelled 105mm howitzer, based on a lengthened chassis of the M24 Chaffee light tank. Beginning in the First World War, but perfected during the Second, was a branch of the artillery family developed for a new threat. Their target? Aircraft. The anti-aircraft cannon used air-bursting munitions, often called flak, to hit aircraft, either in close-quarter infantry defense or in the protection of cities or military bases from massed bombers. After the First World War, aircraft technology developed rapidly. Planes could fly higher and faster than ever before. Many considered anti-aircraft fire impractical in reaching the altitudes and volume of fire to be effective. In the interwar years, the German Krupp company, in association with Bofors, designed a cannon that had a high muzzle velocity and high rate of fire the German 88 Flak was created. Flak is a German contraction of Flugzeugabwehrkanone. It was produced in large numbers and was highly mobile, even being fired whilst on the move. It also doubled as a very effective anti-tank weapon. There were several variants developed in other calibers. At sea, with the rise to power of the aircraft carrier and the ability to project air power over wide areas of ocean, battle groups needed anti-aircraft protection and numerous anti-aircraft guns were deployed. Their ability to shoot down enemy aircraft was quickly realized as an essential element to any naval vessel's survival. The great aircraft carrier battles of World War II in the Pacific are a case in point.